Hello everyone and thanks for visiting Bluebeam Back to Basics. Today we'll be talking about punch list tool sets. For those of you I have not met personally, you can reach me at that phone number and email address and we encourage you to visit our website where you can learn all about our Bluebeam training program. Hi everyone, this will be a brief video of working with a special kind of tool set. For most tool sets in Bluebeam Review, you go into the drawing, you create a markup, and then you right click on it and tell it that you want to add it to a tool set. And that's how these were created here. Or you go in with the snapshot tool and you capture existing PDF content and you add that to a tool set, which is how these markups were done here. But there's a special kind of tool set in Bluebeam called a punch list that can actually be created by and driven by a comma separated ASCII file. That's what I'm going to create right now. I'm going to go to Tool Chest and tell it I want to manage tool sets. And in here I've got a whole library of tool sets and I want to create a brand new one. So I'm going to say Add. And I'm going to give it a name of YouTube-PunchList and hit OK. So it's going to where my tool sets are stored on my, on my system and it's going to create that name and I'm just going to hit OK. So I have a new tool set but it's empty. If it was a normal tool set, I'd start filling it up manually. But since it is going to be a punch list driven tool set, I'm going to stay into the manage tool set option and I'm going to double click on it. And that opens up this dialog box to allow me to import a list of punch key values and have it automatically create the symbols from that. So I'm going to say import and go to a folder on my system where I have a comma separated file. Now you can see it's just a series of values. The first column is the subject. The second column is what I want the punch symbol indication to have. And then the third column indicates what will be displayed in the comments column within the markup list. So this is exactly the way I want it. I'm going to hit open. And now what it's done is it's gone in and it's created punch list symbols that were driven by that comma separated file. And that'll work great. I can continue. I can go back in there and grab it and start placing it into the file. But what if my list changes? That's super simple. You can always come back at a later date, go into your punch list tool set, clear it out. That doesn't have any impact on any symbols that have already been placed in any drawings. You can re-import your punch list. Here I've got an updated one. Open that. Rebuilds the entire thing with the same standards. Now, when I do start putting those into the drawings though, they may be a little bit bigger or smaller than I'm looking for. So that's where you would want to take advantage of the scaling capabilities of any tool set. I know that my scale for my drawing is an eighth of an inch equals a foot, but this is too big. So I'm going to go to the settings option and I'm going to set a scale and I'm going to indicate that the symbols in my library are set at a quarter of an inch equals a foot and then when I go to place them into an eighth of an inch equals a foot drawing they'll be scaled proportionally. I can turn that on and off, you know, deactivate it, reactivate it, but I've got that scalable tool now with my tool set that is really handy and not unique to punch list tool sets. Now what can I do to share this with somebody on maybe an iPad? Well that's really simple as well and there's multiple ways of sharing these BTX files but I've got this tool set and I'm going to save it and then I'm going to export it. When I export it, it's going to be called YouTube Punch List, just like before. And now I have a BTX file that I can share. You know, and, and again, there's many, many ways of sharing that with various people. The fastest way for me is to go to Tools and do an attachment and simply choose that BTX file and stick it into the PDF file that I'm going to be sharing with somebody working out in the field. So now I can just save this file and get out of it and grant them access to it and they can mark it up. Or I could go reopen it and I could do my own markups with it. I'll come in here and say that you know this door has problem type number four and this door has problem type number three. But again, I'm gonna save that and I'll get it out of the file. On my machine, I also have my iPad running and now I'm gonna to go to my iPad and I'm gonna use Bluebeam Review on my iPad. I'm going to connect to the file storage location where I have that drawing. It's right here. It's called Floor Plan with Spaces. I'll tell it to open it. 
It makes a copy of it from the cloud, brings it to the local machine, and I can already see the attached tool set, and I can see the punch list items that were already put inside of it. When you have an embedded or attached BTX file inside of a PDF, and you're working with it on your iPad, all you have to do is go to that paper clip and double tap. I do that, and it automatically imports and applies any tool set, not just a punch list. So now I've got a tool set with all of that symbology, and you'll also notice it still has the supportable scaling capability built into it as well. So if I were to zoom over here and, and maybe go to this office, and I were to choose window problem number one, and go hit a data point in my drawing, that's the size and scale that it's working at. But if I go back to that scale button, which is currently activated, and turn it off and do window problem number one and go place it, you'll see that even on the iPad, that scale value is still there and still very usable. I'm going to press and hold on that and just do a delete to get rid of it. And then I'm going to do something that I really enjoy doing on the iPad. It's a, it's a great feature of this particular app. Is If I have placed a symbol like that as a markup and I've got it directed to a particular window, I can press and hold on that. And you've got the option to do captured media, uh, meaning that I want to take a photograph or a video, something along those lines. And I'm going to hit capture. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit my camera and I'll just grab my camera and I'll look out my window and I'll instead of switching to video I'll leave it at photo and I'll just take a photograph that's what I want I'll hit use photo minimize this and now I've got my PDF I've got my punch list item and it also has an attached photograph with it and if I slide it up you can see all the markups that are inside of here if I am happy with my tool set and I don't want to leave that in the PDF file, I can always go back to that paper clip and press and hold and just delete it from the file if that's something that I want to do. And when I'm done, I'll just make sure that instead of exiting without changes, I'll hit the green checkbox to save changes and make sure that that synchronizes with the cloud server so that everybody accessing that document has all of the up-to-date information as well. I'll hit save, save changes, and let it synchronize. I'll go back onto the PC as someone else. I'd go open that same file. I can see that all the work that was done by the person working on the iPad is still there. And in fact, if I go click on that media button, I'll be able to see the photograph that was taken as well. That's it. I hope you find this video helpful and you'll review the other videos available as well.